Hello and welcome back to another episode of our Faith-Based Marriage Secrets Podcast. I'm Caitlin. <laughs> we know why she gave me the look because I had a reminder last yeah, week what yeah, the name of the show was. Thinking about that all That's day. right. <laughs> I am Aramis. I'm Coach D. And today we are getting back in. I'm just pi the both of y'all, and we're gonna get right into it because we ran out of time last time. <laughs> Right. It was right. well worth it last week. Right. Right. Well, that's true. That's yeah. true. Are we starting off with some stats this week? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. We go listen. We are gonna try to start this thing every time with some numbers. Well, it's not just stats. It's it's the it's the it's the reality the of the matter. Felonious miss teachings as well. Right. We we I, can I can I dub us the marriage myth mythbusters? Uh, right. I like that marriage mythbusters. We are the marriage mythbusters. Mm. So. Okay. With that being said, have you guys ever heard of the 333 rule in relationships? I haven't. The 333 rule? No. 333. Who came up with that? Well, there's there's a lot of people that that use it. What is it? I should say, what is it first? Yeah. uh, I, I can look up the origin in a second. But the 333 rule, this is... Okay. You spend three days apart, three That's days silly. together. I don't need to hear no more. I don't need to hear no more. That's and three silly. days doing individual activity. That's silly. That's six <laughs> That's days al- apart. That's already silly. That sounds like six days apart. Pretty much. It's already silly. But this what, is what, supposed to help relationships. That's silly. It's carnal. Right. It's secular. It's death. It's agony. It's stupid. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> it's silly. Yeah. That's silly. People go by that? Oh, yeah. They don't, it's popular. Be, they don't want to be married. It's not just that one. There, there's a 777 rule. There's they, a 222 rule. They don't want to be married. They don't want to live married for real. No. So I suppose been three days away from my wife? But just then three, three days. days together and then three days doing individual. What's it, individual? So. Them folks ain't married. That stuff's silly. <laughs> right. That right. ain't marriage. This popular? Oh, yeah. Folks do this stuff? Oh, yeah. That's silly. I've never heard of it, but That's I silly. would not be surprised. The, so the basically, three by three rule to keep your relationship and marriage. How do you, this is from marriage.com. This is this is what they propagate. Uh, uh, in general terms, the three by three rule in marriage indicates that each person in the relationship should get three hours of quality time alone with their spouse and three hours of alone time by themselves. Oh, so it's not three days. Well, so certain 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 websites have stated it differently. So the okay. the last one I went to was Allo Health, A L L O Health, right? Um, what is the three 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 rule and how does it work for relationships? And that's the one that. Let me see here. I had it highlighted. So uh, I'm supposed to spend three days away. Yeah. A month. No, hold on. Uh, you spend three days apart. Three days apart. Three days together. Three days together. And three days doing individual activities. What's the, indi- the individual activities mean? Me without my wife. Uh, it sounds like, like golfing, that. like like yeah. go golf, and she goes. Man, that's silly, man. That's silly. Right. Applying the three 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 rule in your own relationship is rel- rel- relatively simple. But start by setting aside three hours to focus exclusively on your partner. Um, and then they talk about things that you can do together. Um, next, commit to spending three days in a row together uh, with outside distractions or obligations. Uh, and then they talk about you know what that is. And then finally, you commit to spending three weeks intentionally building your relationship. Oh, okay. Well, three days together with no mm-hmm. distractions is nice. So that means no work, no, you know, you just do. So what about together. the other four days? Right. Right. What about the other four days? Right. Ignore you? Right. Just go on, go on about life like... You, 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 let, you let the space take its toll. I mean, that, that's not as bad as I originally heard it. So it's a little different. Three days apart is asinine. That's silly. I mean, I mean, I, if that's the you can throw that out the window. Um, but I like, I, I, like, I like the three hours of focused time. Mm-hmm. That's good. Just three hours of just focused time together. Like that's that's a good thing. Like right. We can rock with that. Three hours. Um, 
I'd, I'd, I'd want a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course. Like, 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 <clears throat> I'm a lover. The most agonizing thing, the most agonizing thing a lover can experience is not being able to love. Yep. I was sitting on the couch. Sister Leslie is out of time with her sorority sisters, right? They do a little thing every five years. They go off and they do their sorority thing. And, you, you know, normally the way we wind the day down, I'll be doing some work on the computer. We might be watching one of her shows or something. And she'll be sitting next to me. And a lot of times in between what I'm doing, working to watch TV, I'll grab her hand and hold it mm -hmm. and play with it, mm -hmm. right? So I'm sitting there last night doing work, watching the movie, and I go to grab her hand and hold it. But she ain't there. Mm. But she ain't there. <laughs> see, uh, we see where this is going now. <laughs> like that's what, like that's what you want to do. That's what. Right. That's it. Right. Like that's it. Yeah. That's cute. That's cute. Yeah. No, but like, okay. So, so what? And, and I, I think this was the this is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring these rules up. Is, is you know, you and you said it. Like, what about the other times? Yeah. What about the other days? Yeah. Right. When when you are identifying as a lover, when 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 you are being a lover, there's no off time to that. Right. There's no there's no space in that in, in that love affair. Time off is agony. Man. Right. You mean tell me you ain't come you, you ain't come you ain't come home today? You, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna see you today. You putting it on wax today, boy. I'm not gonna see you today. <laughs> you mean tell me? Yeah. What? Well, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Right. You mean to tell me I'm not going to get to today? Mm-hmm. Ah, you should have told me that I got to prepare for this. <laughs> I got to get, get my mind right for this. Right. Right. Like to a lover, mm -hmm. and now what love is immersion experience is all about bringing you out of your, or shall I say this, your foreign identity as a sinner, as a fallen man, into your original identity as a lover, a man who's upright with God. Right. I will love experience, I will love immersion experience will give you and reestablish you in that. When you get established in that situation, I don't wanna go two, three days, I don't wanna go two, three hours. Like to a lover, time is of no essence. One of the one of the one of the most stricken men in the Word of God that identified as a lover mm -hmm. was Jacob, who then became Israel. <clears throat> when Jacob saw his woman, he said, "Yo, listen." <laughs> I worked seven years for that right now. <laughs> for free. You ain't got to pay me You ain't got to pay me at all, man. I'll give you seven years, man. i give you seven years of labor for that right there. She had to be some kind of fire. I got to see I got to see Rachel. Right? She had to be some kind of fire. I got to see it. Seven years? Bible says it was but as for, it was but a few days to take up. Mm. A love. few days? That's love. It was as but a few days. Time is secondary. Right. And you telling me you want me to spend three days apart from you? Right. I don't get to see you today. Right. That's silly. It's the implementation of space and love. Like they're they're teaching people to put space in it. Like I, I so I heard someone talking on the phone today. And Hey, what's up, fam? Today's Winners One podcast is brought to you by our Coffee in the Morning Club. Listen, they say right now the divorce rate is anywhere between 58 and 62% depending on the community or the culture you grew up in. But they say that rate is drastically reduced if you are a couple who finds a community of like-minded couples. We have a Coffee in the Morning Club marriage enrichment community of couples who are driven to have a faith 
based marriage. This is a marriage that's based upon the principles that God ordained for marriage to be about. If you want your marriage to be drastically reduced from running into chaos, confusion, and trouble, you need to join this community. It's our Coffee in the Morning Club community that will enrich you and empower you and strengthen you to win and make marriage easy. They were talking about how they need, you know, they, they need time for themselves, time to focus on me, right? And my thought when I heard that was, if both of you are doing that, who's right. focused on the love? Right, right. If you focus on you and I'm focused on me, what, what a marriage at? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because marriage is about me focusing on you and you focusing on me. Right. That's what it's really about. Mm -hmm. See, we got we to we look at it from this approach. This is tough. Now, this is tough. This is tough. This is a tough approach. This is a tough approach. <laughs> Whatever, can't say everything, but nine times out of ten, whatever secular society says about a subject matter, think the opposite mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when it comes to the kingdom of God. Think the opposite. Right. Life is hard. Life is a grind. Life has got to... That, that ain't what God taught. That ain't... <laughs> it's actually the opposite in the kingdom of God. He didn't design life to be hard. He didn't design life to be a grind, and you got to grind your way. It, it, he all, you know, it's about work, but it's how you work. Mm -hmm. See, see, when you're really doing the work God has called you to, do, you don't see it as work. Yep. Work in the kingdom doesn't take from you, <clears throat> doesn't detract from you. It empowers you. Right. Work in the world, though, wear you out. <laughs> that's why folk, That's why we come up with concepts like retirement. Hey, that ain't a Bible concept. Vacation time. Vacation. Yep. You don't see nobody. That, that's life is a vacation. Life was designed to be a vacation. Life was designed to be whatever you're trying to get out of retirement. See, mo retirement, retirement comes into play because you did something all your life you really didn't want to do. Now, when I retire, I'm gonna do what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. Right. That that's not. That's not. You want you want to know you want to know how how deep it goes. So for the last <clears throat> year, maybe. Maybe a little bit longer than that. I've been working every day of the week. Mm -hmm. I don't have no days off. The only mm -hmm. days that I have off are driving bands and when mm -hmm. I'm sick. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right? And I don't get sick often. Mm -hmm. So if you would have asked me three years ago to live life right, 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 working right, right, right. seven right. days a week, right, right, right. I would have been like, you crazy. Now, right, right, you know, right. I, I, I need my weekends. Right, right, I need right. my time away from, I, 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 need, I, need, I need time. I need, I need what I need, right? right, right, right. I would have fought you for that. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I take pride in it. Right. Right? right. In, in, in the, work, the work that I'm doing is, is it's, it's easy. It's fulfilling. It's, yeah. it's everything that I needed to be. But it's because I'm I'm being who I'm supposed to be as a husband, mm -hmm. as a father, as a son, mm -hmm. as a, a, a business partner. Like mm -hmm. all, all of those different things that, that I'm that I'm I, I guess in a way allowing myself to be, mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, mm -hmm. makes the process of of working seven days a week with no days off and and and, and you know very little right. time downtime, it makes it easy. Right, you said something earlier though, that thought came to me and when you were just saying that, it came back to me, right? And that's how that's how it's supposed to be. There's supposed mm -hmm. to be an ease to it. Yeah. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. That's right. Marriage ain't supposed to be hard. Not at all. Marriage ain't supposed to be hard. If, it's, if your marriage is hard, if your, if, you, if your marriage is hard, there's a reason why. Let's get to the reason. Mm -hmm. And 99% of the problems that people deal with, that make their marriage hard, our what love is immersion experience, will solve those problems. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about identity. The first issue that we would have to address when it comes to why your marriage is hard is how do you identify? Right. I'm talking about saved folk now. Yeah. I ain't talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about saved folk. 99% of saved folk will still identify as a sinner. Mm. They don't identify with the new creature. 99% of y'all say, folk, how do you identify? Do you still identify as a sinner? 
That's tough. Because you got the folks standing on the stage calling you sinners. Yep. The folks standing on the stage, they still call you sinner. They call you a sinner in a second. <laughs> Man, they call you a sinner. You know y'all know just sinners just like me. Right, they want everybody to come down. They know. Mm -hmm. They call you a sinner in a second. Yep. When we're the righteousness of God. Right. I'm talking about they start digging at the old man in a second. Oh, yeah. When they should be talking to you about the new creature in Christ. That's who we are. It's, it's very easy to be disappointed and disheartened when you're out of the right identity. Oh. And people people attribute the hardness of marriage to how often you're disappointed and disheartened and how you have to push through those things. When you're in the right identity, anytime you're disappointed or disheartened, it's it's seen as an opportunity. Listen, listen, let me say let me throw this thought in there. What you just said, when your identity's right, even the hard parts of marriage are easy. Yeah. Even the hard parts of marriage. Julie, we gotta fix that. Julie, we gotta fix that. Even the hard parts of marriage are easy. What we gotta find it. Right, get the remote case. Even the hard parts of marriage is easy. But well, we well, consider, what are we, right. we will consider it to be yeah, hard. Yeah. Like, like most folks, most folks see marriage as this major, major sacrifice. Yep. We got I gotta sacrifice. I don't know everything. They, everything you're supposed you're supposed to love in spite of being miserable. Right. That, right. That's what they make it seem like. And, and and it's not it's not that it's not that marriage is a mechanism by which I'm to sacrifice. It's because we're growing and we're becoming. Right. Sister Leslie had to wait for me to mature and wait for me to grow and wait for me to get a level of understanding and wait for me to get a level of knowledge as it pertains to certain things. Right. And in that process, she suffered through some things with me. Right. And vice versa. We have to, we have to release the branches of love within our marital relationship so that we can make marriage be what it's supposed to be. Some marriages, husbands need to be more long-suffering than the wife. Some marriages, the wife needs to be more patient than the husband. Some marriages, there's a level of meekness that the wife needs to have. Some marriages, there's a wife of faith that the husband needs to have. Some marriages, there's a, life, there's, there's a, um, uh, uh, a lot of kindness that a husband needs to have. Mm -hmm. Some marriages, there's a keeping no records. The wife needs to have more of the, of the branch of keeping no records of wrong. Right. Right? So, but what we have to be as, what, what identifying as a lover does, it equips me with all of those different variables and variations of, of expressions of love that I need in order to make my marriage easy. To a lover, being patient is no problem. Caitlin, uh, me and Caitlin were having a, a conversation earlier about Allie. <clears throat> and we were talking about, you know, Allie just turned 10 and um, you know, she's she's getting to that age where, you know, in a, in a few years, we, we're going to be dealing with the, you know, the, the puberty and period and stuff like that. Oh, you know, the I attitude going to say something about boys. I mean, we ain't going to be dealing with No, 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 no. Listen, we I got... We got a, we got a, a, a antidote for that. <laughs> Wait, what's the antidote? Shotgun? No, did y'all oh. see... Uh, what's the movie? Uh, uh, the Will Smith and, uh, and, and Mars? No. Oh, you talking? No. No, you talking about bad um, boys? You see bad boys? Oh, bad oh yeah. Boys. You see bad boys? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the end of the. What's your name is, boy? <laughs> it was another one. It was another one too. I like that one even better. Uh, Fifty Cent played in the movie. Oh he yeah. And he brought the boy in the garage. Yep. Yeah, was, Had all there. them dudes in there. That's oh, the end yeah. right there. Let's go, yeah. man. Let me talk to you out in the garage. Yep. Have all the boys out there, shirts yep. off, working out, bench press. <laughs> Yo, listen up. We got some rules around here, man. You see these dudes? Yeah, take a good look at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but go ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you. No, you good. You good. So, <clears throat> so we were talking about that, and, and Caitlin goes, you know, I I hope you're ready for that. I said, I, I, listen, at Ali's easy. I I I got I got that mm -hmm. figured out. It, that's easy, right? Mm -hmm. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, listen. It, as long as you don't match Ali, and I went through this whole breakdown of how I deal with Ali, and 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 she goes and she goes. How, how did you say you were you were like um you were like how did you get how, how did you figure that out how did how did you get to that point mm -hmm. and and the idea was you know like how did I get to the point where 
I could deal with Ali so easily, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I and and the answer that I, that I gave was she trusts me, but what I was really Hey, what's up, Coach D here. Listen, I got something I need to say to you real quick. Listen, marriage is made for lovers. Now, once you understand that marriage is made for lovers and you're not listening to them folks that keep saying you need more than love to make marriage work, you have to identify as a lover. Once you identify as a lover, now you got to learn what love is. Guess what? We have something for you that can help you understand exactly what love is in its most comprehensive nature. It's so much more than just an emotion. But you got to get the book to find out exactly what God's intent was for love and how it functions. Thanks. Get the book. God bless. And I thought about this after. What I was really saying is I've loved her the right way. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I've, 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 I've brought her, I brought her to a point in the way that I love her mm -hmm. to where she trusts my word. She, you know, all of that stuff that goes mm -hmm. into that. Mm -hmm. But that's what makes it easy. Right. The, right, the culture of love you've established. Right, right. I was on a call last night with a with a couple, and you know they 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 they're recovering some ground that was lost. Mm -hmm. Right, and so and so, I had to tell the husband like it is. So the husband wants to reengage in in some activity that that the wife really don't want him to reengage in because it's a part of why they need to recover some ground. Mm. And the bottom line to it is, listen, bro, you have to create a a culture. Of love that 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 gets her to the point where she feels safe and comfortable and confident in whatever you do. Your responsibility now is to recover the ground that was lost when it comes to the <coughs> word trust. Reestablish the the faithfulness and the and the security within her her soul. You have to reestablish that. Right. Whatever you got to do. You have to reestablish that. Right now, you can't do it right now. Right. Because she ain't ready for you to get back into that. You can't do it. Right. So you have to reestablish that. The culture that you established has created this, this, this trust and this rest that whatever I lead you in or say to you or, or promise you or whatever, you 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 receive it. Mm -hmm. We had a situation this morning on Coffee and Morning Club where we had a first time guest on and she just I, I I I think she thought that the nature of the meeting was share all your put put all your business out in the street. Man, we Which just, to a degree. I right. mean we want people to be comfortable <laughs> yeah. enough to share yeah. and everybody can share their experiences, but it's not required. Right. You right. Know, but well, what was funny about it, that was her very first time on. Mm -hmm. I was just saying, hey, and next thing you know, maybe let it out. <laughs> but the point was the solution is the same. The solution is identity, is identity. What we've failed at and part of what you were talking about were these, these relationship methods rules and tactics and, and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And then the, the statistics as it relates to the church and the divorce rate and where we are in making the investment in the church and into the marriages within our church proves this out, that we... When we do address marital issues, when we do address um, how husbands should function, how wives should function, it's it's from a symptom. It's a symptom-based approach, mm -hmm. and not a identity-based approach. Right, and it has to be an identity-based approach because everything about the kingdom of God starts with identity. Yep. That's why the first thing God did was deliver me from the power of darkness and translate me to the kingdom of his dear son. That's why the first thing that God did was bring me out of Adam and into Christ. Yep. Because he had to get my identity back right. Yep. Because until that happens, right, until my being has been affected, I don't care what I give you to do. Your being has got to be who you be. Right. Right? If it ain't who you be, then what you what you attempt would your attempt to do what I instruct you to do Will be hard. Trust me when I tell you, I know we'll that. Be a grind, <laughs> and eventually, man, it's too much. Man. Yeah. it's too hard. But 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 the instruction we gave this morning and the coaching we gave this morning was basically: listen, there's a better way, there's an easier way, there's a more efficient way, there's a more there's a more um, uh, adventurous way, mm -hmm. there's a more empowering way. That's going through your identity as a lover. 
you have to immerse yourself. And when you immerse yourself into this identity as a lover, you begin to, you begin to pick up some things. We have this word that we call character. We got to see a person's character. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a, that's a secular approach to relating to people and getting to know people and determining what people are. That's secular. Mm -hmm. Because we look at what we call, whatever they, the people have different variables for what they call good character, right? What's good about the old man? Not What's good about him? Not a thing. Did God save one thing about that man? Not at all. There's nothing good about him. Right. The new man comes with the character built in him already. There's a character. Man, you got to have good character. Man, what are you talking about, character? I hear, you hear, you hear faith bait. What are you talking about, character? What's character? What are you talking about? That ain't no, that ain't, that ain't no Bible. Ain't no Bible in that. Right. Well, character, character. Man, what's character? Character is built into the identity that you embrace. Is character. Hmm. What they would call character. The characteristics that make you who you are is built into your identity. Right. They look at it as character is something that you, you create on your own. No, it's built into who I am. Right. It's in my it's, it's my it's about my being. The there's character only, there's only two though. There's there's the the, the world's character and the, yeah. the new man's yeah, character. Yeah, the new man's character. Let's say it like this there's the old man character and the new man character. Right. Right? The new man character is rooted, is rooted in what we would call hate. Mm -hmm. The old man's character, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The new man's character is rooted in what we call love. Right. It's rooted in love. That what the, that's what determines character. Yeah. I don't care how good you can try to be. If at your being is hate. I'm rooted in hate. It's gonna it's gonna come out. It's gonna come out. Yep. Yeah. I don't care how, but if your character is rooted over here, if your if your identity is rooted over here, then you're going to demonstrate certain qualities. Well, I would love his immersion experience, but one help you first identify as a lover. Mm -hmm. Then those characteristics that people are looking for will begin to manifest as fruit manifests, and not not as trying or or. Or grinding will cause right. the manifest. Right. So much so that you can't help but exude those characteristics. Man. You can't yeah. help but love. You can't help but forgive. You can't help. You just everything that's associated with with loving my wife to 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 the utmost degree. I can't help but do. It's I just gotta try not, I got to try not to do. It. Right, right. You you talked about this before. Hey, what's up, fam? I want to thank you, first of all, for watching our podcast. Now, secondly, I want to give you some information that is very important. I was recently talking to a couple, and as we were assessing the marital situation, they came to the conclusion that the problem that they were dealing with was because they hadn't laid the proper foundation to build the marriage that they wanted to build. I said, that's exactly right, and I have a solution for you. We put together a marriage mastery curriculum that establishes a foundation that will enable you to build the marriage you desire. We talk about things for, as far as your identity as a lover. We talk about how to build a culture of love. We talk about heroic husbandry. We talk about wonder's wifery. We talk about edifying communication. We talk about grace field communication. Like we talk, we cover so much in this curriculum that it's going to put you on a path to be marriage masters. Now, what I need you to do is click the link in the description. This is going to give you some more insight and in just how you can enroll right now into our course. If you are newlywed, if you just engaged, if you recently married, this is a great course for you. You need to check it out. We got a great price for you. We got a payment plan that you can enroll in. So go now, click the link below and get more information. And I'll see you in our Marriage Masters University. I gotta try not to do. You gotta try to be mad. I gotta try to be mad. I gotta try to hold on to that thing. I'll be trying. I'll be trying. I'll be trying. I'll be trying, I'll be trying. I'll be trying to hold on to it. I gotta try to hold on to it. It's hard. Yeah. Folk be playing on that too. Folk know he gonna be on. He gonna, he gonna let it go. Folk be playing on it. He ain't gonna hold on to that thing. No, but you gotta, you gotta like, like, like when you enter into, we call this, most folks don't understand that love is a law. Yep. It functions as a law.
Jesus said it like this. He said, he said, accept. He said, accept. In other, in other words, if you don't do this, you're going to have problems. Mm -hmm. Here is where the problems lie with most marriages. Here's why most marriages are hard. Except you abide in me and I in you. Now, we can say that like this. Except you abide in love and love is abiding in you. Mm -hmm. You can do nothing. He said, you, you, he basically, he went on to say, you can't bring forth the fruit of loving. Except you abide in the law of love. Loving is a law. And if you understand the reason for law, the power of law, the purpose of law, and the fruit of law, you understand what I mean when I say that. Mm. That's powerful. You understand it. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand, God instituted law so that a specific action can happen consistently and effortlessly in the life of those who abide in it. Mm. Think about yeah. that. That word abiding is a, it, that. that's that's a big deal. When you when you talk about abiding, you're talking about one of one of our favorite words, our favorite terms, which is immersion. Immersion. That's when what you're, it is. When you're abiding in it's like immersion. Nowadays, people try to sprinkle a little bit of love on on, on a character that's rooted in hate and think mm -hmm. that that's going to do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to burn right off. It's going to burn right. I mean, the idea of abiding it means to take up a permanent residence. Yep. I'm I'm listen I'm. It's, it speaks to my identity, mm -hmm. and it speaks to the law, the function. I'm, I'm, a by, I'm, I'm here. I'm not moved. Now, once I enter into the law of a thing, mm -hmm. now the power of the law, the force of that law, the might of that law, and the actions of that law manifest effortlessly. Mm -hmm. right. How does the apple tree produce apples? How hard does the apple work to be an apple on the tree? <laughs> it's not working hard. It just is. It just is. Because that's what it's programmed to do. The Bible says, the Bible says, the earth bringeth forth. We don't understand how, but it, 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 it brings forth. Because God put it in place. I'm sorry, it's the way it my brain works. I just imagine a bunch of apples on the tree working hard to pull away from the right. tree. Right, I'm so trying to get off this tree. I'm <laughs> like, what is the, what is the, how hard does the branch work to produce apples on the branches? Right. It ain't, it's a by, it's in the law of life of the tree. Yeah. We got to see that as the church. It don't have to be hard. I just got to properly identify as a lover. Why? Because marriage is made for lovers. For lovers. Yep. It's really that simple. Yep. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. Kaylin, it's really that simple. No such thing is too good to be true in this case. Marriage was made for lovers. Right. If you don't identify as a lover, it's going to be hard. Yep. If you don't fully Im immerse yourself into your identity as a lover... It's going to be hard. Yep. Like we can really stop right like that's 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 the coaching session right there. Like really. Yeah. Yeah. We can really stop right there. If you understand that marriage is made for lovers and you don't identify as a lover. Oh, that's why my marriage is so hard. <laughs> right. Cuz your identity speaks to your being. Yeah. If you if your being is right, your thinking will be right. Mm -hmm. Your speaking will be right. Your doing will be right. Your having will be right. Without having to try. I don't, I don't, I don't, listen, I ain't never seen sweat dripping off an apple on an apple tree. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never seen an apple sweating to hang on on the vine. I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. I ain't seen an apple tree over there grinding and working hard and sweating and, and Fighting and gritting and grunting right. to hang on the to hang on the branch. Right. I ain't seen it yet. <laughs> I ain't seen it. Right. But you gotta buy it properly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we gotta go. Me too. Yes. Uh, thank you for joining us this week. Make sure you click on the links below. Join our coffee in the morning club. That way you can get us to know us on a more folk be on the level. folk be on the on the you. I'm sorry, baby. Folk be on the TV talking like they know what they're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah. They be like, well, marriage is hard, and you got to really suffer, and you got to really work hard at it, and it's going to be, so you got to set. Man, be quiet. Right. Be quiet. You don't know what you're talking about. 
Right. Been That's been true. reading the books that the secular society wrote about marriage, and now you're gonna come and give it to God's people. Right. It's silly. Right. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week.